Eric Short. I'm the Vice Dean at Texas A&M University School of Law, and I'm here today with Patty Turner and Roland Johnson. Patty is Chairman of the Board at the Texas Center for Legal Ethics and General Counsel and Chief of Staff at Texas Wesleyan University. Roland is a partner at Harris Finley and Bogle and is former President of the State Bar of Texas. Thank you for joining me today. My first question is, uh, could you describe from your perspective what the importance of the Texas Lawyers Creed is. Patty, let's start with you. Oh, I'm going to defer to Roland on this one, but uh, obviously the importance of the Texas Lawyers Creed has uh, arose in some time historically where there are a lot of difficulties seen within the profession. So much so that the courts, both the highest courts of Texas, um, the Supreme Court, Texas Supreme Court, and then Texas Court of Criminal Appeals created that creed and adopted it in 1989. Um, to try to really further professionalism in the practice and to really give some depth of uh, what they want lawyers to pay attention to when they when they do practice. You might want to talk about that a little bit more. Yeah, I think it speaks to um, relations between the lawyers and lawyers, lawyers and the court system, lawyers and judges, uh, even lawyers, lawyers and clients. I mean, it kind of just encompasses the whole being of what lawyers are doing during the day because they got to be relating to some of those groups. Um, it's voluntary, uh, but I always like, I think one of the last sentences in the preamble is something like, and we're going to do these things for no other reason than it's right. <laughs> and so it is the right thing to do. But it really did get to the point, like Patty says, that these courts said, in Texas, we want things to be different. We want Texas lawyers uh, to relate well with these groups that I just mentioned. And it's so important that it even asks us to include the Texas Lawyers Creed's words when we take on a new client. And so I think you'll see in the practice that many uh, fee engagement letters either attach it or incorporate it in some fashion so that the client actually has to see how we're supposed to, to relate with one another. And so have y'all seen a change in the practice of law after adoption of the Texas Lawyers Creed? Have you seen any difference in the way lawyers are acting and representing clients and behaving in their daily works? Well, I'll, I'll go. I think yes. I think it actually gives lawyers a way to, to talk to their clients. You want me to do this, but this is a way I can bring you back to what the support court, the uh, heads of the judicial branch in the state of Texas have said we're supposed to do this. For example, uh, just a simple uh, continuance on I need some more time in order to get some discovery in. The creed even talks about, you know, unless your client just says no or it really hurts your client, you're just, you don't even have to call your client about giving another 10-day extension on something. Just relate to that lawyer like you would like them to relate to you and, and get on down the road. So. Uh, it's it's a way to come back to center about how to relate. It, it has served a very useful purpose that way. And I think it serves uh, well for the judiciary too. So when some of the conflicts bubble up to the court level, they also are guided by that creed. And um, I think it just helps in decisions that they're going to grant and how they expect lawyers to behave in front of them. So I think it adds muscle really all the way around for helping clients be realistic about their expectations, helping courts enforce that kind of professionalism and helping lawyers to know it's expected as well. 